My name is Pete Muller. I'm a photographer based in Nairobi, Kenya. I've been covering East and Central Africa for about the last five years. In March and April, I made two separate trips for the Washington Post to the Masisi district of Eastern Congo to look at the dimensions of conflict that have existed in Masisi, which is really sort of the heartland of, of the conflict in Eastern Congo, where cyclical violence has been ongoing for the last two decades. I think the major challenge we were facing was environmental access. So the infrastructure is, is minimal, the road systems are completely dilapidated. So we were in a situation where we were trekking high, high, high up into the mountains over the course of days on motorbikes in heavy rains, trying to just basically reach this place in order to start working. In addition to that, you're dealing with a security situation which is fluid and unstable. Uh, there are myriad armed groups that operate in this part of Masisi district. So we had to be mindful in a lot of ways of you know, exactly where we were moving and when we were moving and coordination with people on the ground that could inform elements of armed forces that were operating in the area of our presence so that we didn't catch anybody by surprise. It was just some exchange of fire up on the hilltop. Uh, so this is, this is exactly the kind of jungle fighting that's going on. Quick ambushes, hit and run, very difficult terrain to control. So we're here in the village of Kivuye, which is super, super remote. Uh, it's a place where it's almost impossible to do any kind of work without everybody in the town stopping to watch what you're doing. And I think that this particular village that we chose to base this story around is in fact emblematic of the way that the conflict in Eastern Congo is transpiring and transpires, you know, continuously whether the, the, the international media are, are paying attention to it or not. Some of our reporting focused uh, to an extent on the FDLR, which is an organization that is regarded as being the contemporary incarnation of the Hutu genocidaires, uh, who came across the border into eastern Congo, what was then Zaire, after the genocide in Rwanda in 1994. And they have since sort of evolved and changed as an organization. Company de mi, tu! It was a quite unique experience as an outsider to see the kind of day-to-day -day military operations that are going on in Eastern Congo. Where small units of Congolese soldiers are engaged in sort of counterinsurgency operations against irregular forces. They're interacting consistently with the civilian population where these irregular forces originate from. So you're seeing the interplay that has defined a lot of the way that people discuss the conflict in Eastern Congo. The beauty of Eastern Congo has been entirely forgotten in the way that it's been discussed because of all of the problems that exist there. And I think for me it was really, it, it remains a very dear place to me because of its beauty. And I've tried to show that uh, in the pictures and not just have it focus entirely on, on the place's problems, but in, in part really the, the, the natural beauty of the place is really breathtaking.